How you doing guys? Today's job is going to be clutch change on a Mark 1 Audi TT. Uh, we've got a lovely Quattro Sport in us today. Um, I'm going to do a review on this car separately uh, at a later date as well for you. Uh, but yeah, today's job, we're going to change the clutch. Uh, we changed it from the standard Quattro Sport clutch, which is the same as the V6 clutch, uh, to a 225 clutch because they are stronger. Um, I actually filmed a clutch change video about a year ago on my Ava Silver TT. But because I had to rush it through, I had to do a load of other jobs while I was under there. I just It just wasn't good enough. Uh, I've tried editing it, I've tried adding bits in, but yeah, I'm just going to start fresh with this one. And hopefully I can show you everything you need to see. I'm sure I don't need to tell you how to jack the car up and how to remove the basics from the top of the engine bay. So I'll crack on with that now. Um, and yeah, then we'll get to the nitty gritty of the clutch change. Okay, so because this is a Quattro Sport, to disconnect the battery, we need to do that in the boot. We need to disconnect the battery because we're going to be taking the, the cables off the starter motor. So we need to have everything disconnected. So we're going to do the earth side first. Reason being, obviously, earth, ground. If I touch my tool to the chassis, it doesn't matter. There's no potential difference there. While the earth is connected to the battery, if I was to touch the positive terminal to the chassis, by accident, there is a massive potential difference of 14.4 volts and a very high discharge battery uh, is going to spark. So that's why we disconnect the earth first and then we can disconnect the power as well, just for the sake of it. But once one's disconnected, that's all you really need to do. I just do both out of habit, really. There we go. So we're really only going to need to have the air filter and the battery tray out of the way. Uh, everything else we can access up top that we need to. So while we're up top, um, these clips are already taken off. These just clip on and off quite easily. Finger under that little tab there and pull it off. And that's so that we can take the linkages off. Um, we're gonna need to undo the 13 mil there, there, and then there's a nut um, just there, which is um, on the end of, uh, the main gearbox bolt. Same sort of situation to this one here, which is holding the earth stop on, so we need to undo that one as well under there. On an APX style one, these these fittings are slightly different, so you could undo it from the, from the actual um, cable itself, and then if you do that, you'd have to follow the gear linkage reset uh, procedure, which I've got uh, a guide for on the channel as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna whip all that out, whip all this off, uh, and then we'll crawl back underneath and see what else needs to do. Okay, so we can then get the linkages all out of the way. And they sit quite nicely up here, just the other side of this aircon pipe. Quite useful. So, yeah, from here we can also see that there, that's the uh, speed sensor takeoff. So we need to undo that plug from the gearbox as well. You can see the plug just there. And then we can just tuck this up here out of the way as well. And then we've got to I'm going to undo this one and then take those off. And again, that's easier once the linkage is out of the way because then you can just push the tower assembly down and get straight onto the nut. So, again, keeping stuff in a sensible location up top. And then we're going to take this earth cable off. That can go out of the way. 
Okay, so we're gonna take the subframe off. Uh, now I've got a video, which I'll put the link somewhere here uh, on how to remove the subframe, that's a separate thing. Uh, but once that's off, then I can start showing you the uh, specific steps required for removing the gearbox and the additional things that need to come off before that. Okay, so the subframe's off. So let's go underneath and see what we need to do. So we're gonna to wanna to take the intercooler cross pipe off. Now normally, the power steering line would go across here, but here's one I bodged earlier. About three or four years ago, I did this fix for Gary. Um, maybe three years. We looped the corroded pipe and just put a bit of flex in. Anyway, uh, and then we're gonna to wanna to remove the fixings for the other power steering pipe, which are all up here. Um, so I've got the side panels off that usually bolt up here. Uh, and this side I've undone the headlight level sensor connection um, so that I was able to pull down there. And that's what normally hides those bolts down. So yeah, we're gonna undo those three, undo the Jubilee, so that both sides, get all this out of the way. Like I said, get the power steering lines all undone. Um, we're gonna wanna take the drive shafts off as well, just from this end will be fine. So they're just an M10 spline, so we can buzz those off. Uh, if you haven't got a buzz gun, what you can do is you can put a screwdriver in this part of the caliper or in this part of the caliper into the veins of the disc and that will hold it all still while you crack these off. If you don't, then the whole thing will just spin freely. Um, but yeah, with a buzz gun, that's even easier. So we're gonna do that both sides uh, and then we'll come back to you. So where possible, we're leaving bolts in place or bolts in sensible places so they're next to where they need to go back in. But they're out of the way here for when I've got my transmission jack there. So then these bolts will all go over here or stay in the drive shaft itself. So then now we've got a better view of the starter motor. So we've got this plug here that's going to need to come off, there's one on the starter motor itself that's going to need to come off up there. And then we're going to need to go in here. There's a nut that's on the other bolt that holds the starter motor. It's got a bracket attached to it which holds the cabling, which we can see from up top. So this bracket here is held on underneath. There's a 13mm nut under there. So we're going to undo that so that this can move out of the way so that we can take the starter motor off. We're going to undo the starter motor from this connection here as well, 13 mm nut again. Again, there are the couple of plugs that we're going to undo. Uh, yeah, so that's fairly straightforward. Um, so we're going to do that now, and then we can get the starter motor off. Now, I want to show you this bolt here. Before I take the starter motor off, I'm going to take this bolt off. And that's because it's easier. The more bolts you take off from the gearbox, the more pressure this one's under and as you can see you can't really get much of a turn on it so it's easier if this one is not load bearing in any way and you can usually spin it out this one isn't going to spin out this one's going to cause me grief but it's worth a try usually you get away with it so, so we're going to take this one out So then 
this can be pulled away and moved out of the way there, like that. So then we can get onto the, the 18 mil there. So it's half inch on this because it's always tight. And then we'll do the bottom one. Anyway, that's the starter motor. So, once that's out of the way, uh, we're gonna go around to driver side. So again, I've got to take this shaft off. And then I've got to take this cover off, which has got a few nuts. And then we're gonna undo the bolts for this support bracket for transfer box. And then we've also, got to undo let's get a view these three they're on the prop shaft now to undo these these are a 12 pointed 10 mil to do these you've simply just got to put the gearbox into any gear and that'll offer enough resistance through the box for you to be able to crack those bolts off um, and then once we've done that that is the lion's share of uh, what needs to be undone so I'm going to do those bits now Right, so we're going to discuss options for removing the gearbox. There's two options. So you can either split the transfer box away from the gearbox first, uh, and in which case you're going to need to drain the oil, and you're going to need to have new seals ready for that, or you can remove the whole thing as one. Um, so let's have a look what that would look like. So the join for the gearbox to the transfer box is here. So you've got these two 16s under here. Now these will either have um, well, they might have the 8mm bit there or not. Uh, there's a few different fittings you use for those. But then the other two equivalents are up here, just there, and then the other one. Can't even get an angle to show you really from up here. Um, but suffice it to say, it's awkward. Um, and then there's also 6mm Allen headed bolt inside there, which is about here, so it needs to be on a long extension to undo that. Um, and once you've undone that, that whole uh, transfer casing and would come away. Um, but if you look up here, you've got this part of the engine here sticks out, and the transfer box has got to get past that, which is what makes it awkward. Which is why, if you've got a transmission jack like this, then you can keep it together. If not, it's really, really tricky. Also, on this joint here, there's three seals. Um, which to buy new seals is about 27 quid for the three. So that's just something to weigh up as well. You're gonna to wanna to put new gear oil in if you're dropping that as well. If you're dropping the gear oil, you would wanna undo this here. And you'd also wanna undo this here on the transfer box just to really get rid of all of the oil. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna be keeping the whole thing complete because that's the way I do it. So I'm gonna take off the, the prop as discussed before um and then to be honest with you that's probably going to be it for today reason being what? so that's probably going to be it for today reason being um i've had a few errands to run during the day which i've done um it was too hot to work earlier i use that as an excuse but i had to run my errands so i did those at midday while it was hottest anyway um but i've been suffering with a really bad shoulder uh for the last week or so and removal and refitting of the gearbox is only going to make that play up even more so I'd rather rest up tonight let those heal and then I can do that faff of a job tomorrow morning but you won't notice any difference because I'll clip my fingers and it'll be tomorrow it's tomorrow so I'm going to support the engine support the gearbox uh, we need to take a few more bolts out of the gearbox as well and then we can start lowering it down and getting it off so before we get the support we need to take this bolt off here we need to take these two off here as well uh, now on an earlier start APX or something with a secondary air intake there'll be something connected through here to hold the bracket if that if like a T50 or something so that would need to just come off as well um, so that's all that needs to be done underneath and then we can put a block of wood on the uh, trolley jack and support the sump from there and then we can get the uh, transmission jack under this end so i'm going to do that now okay 
Okay, so I've got the engine supported at the strong point of the sump at the back and the transmission is supported there. So up top, we still need to undo the hydraulic feed onto the clip. So pull this clip out and then we pull this line off. Now, it's a good idea to have something like this, a little bung, ready to stop the fluid going everywhere. Put this up in the air. And then we just pop this over the, ah, uh, nope, disaster. this over the end. Now, look just here, this little bit here is perfect. We took the line under and that round holds it in place perfect. I wonder if that's a design, I don't know. But anyway, it's a good idea to have these clips handy, have spares of them because they do rust and corrode and then when you try and take them off they just snap. So then up top we've just got a undo the two top bolts here and then we've got to undo these two 18s those are 18s as well back there and we've got to do these three 16s and then we can remove this part of the the mount out of the way lower the whole thing down slightly and then we can take the gearbox off so they're all out so this part of the, the mount if we lower the jack slightly This part of the mount can come out, like so. And if we look under here now, we will notice that the gearbox is split away from the engine. Happy days, that's what we want. So now we've got to lower the engine a bit because the gearbox has got to get past the chassis leg there. Now this part of the steering line here, we're going to work around it and this is going to go over the top of the box as it comes away. And the other power steering line is going to fold back on itself and stay over here out of the way. And then as we lower the whole thing, I'm going to have to wiggle it to get the transfer box past that part of the engine that I showed you earlier that's going to cause the issues, past that notch there. So, yeah, past here. So we've got to wiggle the transfer box that way to get it off. So I'll attempt to... Uh, I'll attempt to catch this on camera. Um, you'll see how it goes. Uh, let me see if I can get a good angle for this for you. Before I forget, so the prop's going to need to come off there, and then uh, that'll just go. We'll tease that above uh, where it fits on the transfer box, so then it's out of the way while that all comes away. But you have to sort of balance moving the prop around with moving the transfer box and the gearbox off the engine. And this holds the flywheel in place as you're trying to undo and do up um, the, the bolts that are related to that. Um, so this is a really useful bit of kit. 
3067. Get yourself one. So this is the V6 slash Quattro Sport setup. Major difference is this pressure plate setup. Now on the QS and V6, we need to use a nine mil 12 pointed socket to undo that. Um, so if I was to just try and crack that off, we're gonna get rotation we're fighting against and then it will crack off. And if you try and torque it up, then you're turning the engine the wrong way. So we can undo them fine like this, but then come the flywheel ports, we've got an issue. So that's where this tool comes in, because we just put this tool in here, like this, and it locks against that tooth there. That means that the flywheel will not move. And then when we're tightening it up, we take this tool out, and we flip it round and we put it in the top hole here. And again, it means that the flywheel will not move. So we can torque everything up using this. Um, but because I've got a buzz gun, I'm just going to rattle all these off. Now, if you uh, care about your cleanliness, uh, it might be best to put some cardboard down because as you take the pressure plate off, it is going to drop a lot of clutch dust, which if that gets in your skin, like if you're rolling around on the floor like I always do, that gets on your skin. It's very difficult to scrub off, especially when it's on your back and you can't see where it is. So that's just a little tip for you. This already. Yeah. Hey, presto. And we can see this clutch plate has worn all the way to flat. Especially this side, look, no grooves left. So that is well and truly shocked. Now the flywheel, we've just got these 12 spline, M12 spline bolts that need to be undone. And we're just going to wrap those off. You can hear that noise. That's why at 130,000 miles, we're not gonna reuse the dual mass flywheel. But you can make that assessment yourself. Obviously it's an expensive part of the kit. Um, and if you're only on 60,000 miles and your clutch is gone, then your flywheel might be all right. But at this sort of mileage, you can hear that's already starting to, starting to give a little bit. We don't want it to um, you know, give up totally after another 20,000 miles of having the clutch done. So yeah, we're gonna do it all in one go. Worth also pointing out that this needs to be sort of a longer reach than normal to get past the flywheel. That one there, there we go. So again, I'm gonna buzz these off, but if you haven't got a gun, you can just do it the muggle way. Um, but you'll need to lock off the, the flywheel, definitely. Uh, with either that tool or someone holding the other end of the engine with a 19mm on the main crank ball. This is a heavy lump of metal to be trying to do one handed. Hang on. And so that is what we are left with when we're done. Got the old dual mass, the old pressure plate, and the old friction plate. Okay, so I've just put those in loosely for now. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my special tightening tool in place, and then like that. And then I'm going to tighten all these, just nip them up, and we're going to go opposite. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And then we're going to torque them up. Um, so we're going to torque them to, ooh, 
60 newton meters and then a quarter turn. Pretty sure, and if it's not, I'll correct myself in a second. Sorry about that. So there you can see, I've got my dots at 90 degrees apart. Just helps you to A, remember where you've been, and B, make sure you've turned it enough because it's quite difficult to get the 90 odd in one go due to sort of the angle that you're working at, things like that. So we we'll tighten those up and then we need to clean the flywheel surface and the pressure plate surface before the next part of assembly. Since the weather's not going to help me and offer me some shade, I've had to give myself a break from the sun. So we're going to uh, use this clutch alignment tool. Uh, if you haven't got one of these, you don't need one. In fact, I'll show you how to do it without one. So you haven't got to get one. Getreibzeit. Sorry to any German listeners. Getreibzeit. Uh, that's probably really awfully pronounced, but that is gearbox side. So we're gonna put the two together and we're gonna offer it up to the flywheel. And we've got these locating pins like so. I'm gonna push that on gently. We're not worried about where the clutch plate is sat at the moment. Then we're gonna get the new bolts. And we're going to put them in loosely. We're only going to put two in. Uh, we're going to put two opposites in like this. And we're going to the point where they just nip. Like that. Just nip. And that's it. Now the disc will move, but not very easily because these are just starting to nip it. So then we can use, uh, so if we look at this, the insides, there's a circle that we need to use to line it up. But basically the, the other thing to do is by feel, you see this edge here, and then just here, you can see the edge of the friction plate. So there, I can feel the gap there. I can feel the gap here. The gap here is massive, the gap here is non-existent, and the gap here is what it needs to be. So this plate needs to go up that way, so we can just put this bar in and just maneuver it ever so slightly where we think it needs to be. Have a feel around the edges. Okay, so it needs to go this way. Feel again and so on until you know you've got it in the right place. So I'm going to do that and then show you. My eye, you can see that that lines up perfectly. So once you're happy that that lines up, you just got to get the other six, uh, the other four bolts in, and then do them all up a uh, quarter turn at a time in opposites until they're all the way flat. And there's a reason for that. If you were to just tighten this one down then this side of the pressure plate, because these are all springs, this side would be under massive stress. And so you would end up warping these, you'd end up warping the pressure plate. Um, and so it would not disengage and engage properly. So like I said, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. In that sort of order, and we're just gonna do that until they're all just nipped up, and then we'll torque them to 25 newton meters. see the difference now in the pressure plate, see how that's flat. So when the slave cylinder operates, it pushes against those, which releases the friction plate from the clamping force, uh, and it's all able to spin freely. 
and that's basically it that is in place you can see it's nice and it's nice and flat the obviously these started quite protruded uh, yeah so now we're going to torque them up to 25 newton meters very useful and there you go so now we just need to change the slave cylinder and we can put the gearbox back on all right so we're going to use a six-sided socket on these nine mil these are quite tight uh, i can brace it Ooh. oh did that crack off yeah now these are quite long There you go. So we're gonna whip those out. And we need to uh, take this clip off. And there we go, this section's off. So like I say, it's good to have replacements of these clips on standby. <laughs> and there is the old slave. Now, with the new slave, we need to pre-fill it. If you don't pre-fill it, uh, bleeding can be a bit of a pain in the ass. So to do that, uh, we just get the new slave. So the method for this, we're gonna compress it by hand, like so, dip it into some brake fluid, and then release. Uh, I don't think that went deep enough, but yeah, I need to use two hands to steady my, uh, my thing, but that way it'll be full up inside. Now, when I gently press this, you can see it's got fluid in there. So, once this is back on the gearbox, when the gearbox is pushed against the clutch, this will push in slightly and this will spray some out. And at that point, if you can put the connector block back on and put the original clutch line back on, you've only got minimal air in the system then that needs bleeding out. So that's the, way, the reason I do it this way. So we're going to fit this back in now and then we can get the gearbox back on. Okay, so putting the gearbox back in place. <clears throat> when I jack it up, I tilt it this way, which helps the transfer box go past the part of the block that's the issue up here. Okay, um, and yeah, that's about all the advice I can give at this stage. I'm just going to set the camera up and you can see how it goes back on. Okay, so at this stage, this is the interesting stage. So you can see it's not quite its faces are not quite parallel to each other. So this is this stage that just requires wiggling and ever so fine adjustment of the height of the, both the box and the engine to get them to line up. But when they do slot in together, it'll just push up nicely. Like I said, that's the point at which your slave cylinder is gonna push some fluid out. But yeah, it's all past where it needs to be. So all that's being located now is, is the main, Ooh. Is the main input shaft of the gearbox has got to get into the flywheel. So if you've not aligned the flywheel correctly, this bit becomes even more difficult. Uh, so yeah, I'm just, I've got to use two hands for this and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle until it goes on. But once it goes on, just have a couple of the lower bolts ready to, to just start threading by hand, just to hold it all in place. And then I find it's easier to get it all up into the uh, normal height uh, and then tighten everything up. But, yeah, I'm going to tackle what could potentially be one of the most awkward bits of the job. Or sometimes it just slides in straight away. Who knows how this one's going to go. Let's see. There we go. It's just starting to slide on. Oh. So now I'll just give it a nudge. 
There you go. Woo! That is potentially the hardest part of the job. I'm knackered. And this is why I didn't want to do it yesterday. My shoulders are absolutely killing me. Woo! But like I say, that is the worst bit of the job. So I'm gonna put the bolts, a couple of bolts in just to pull it home a little bit and then lift it up on the trolley jack and on the uh, transmission jack, get the engine mat in place, uh, do it up and then take a well deserved rest. Okay, so there we go. I've got a bolt in up top. I've got the gearbox mount in place and we've got that bolt at the bottom so now we can just go around and put all the the gearbox bolts back in and like I said leave the one that we took at first do that last that's the easiest way of doing that and then yeah really refitting is the reversal of removal as they say in Haynes manual it is just a logical process now to put it back together so I'm not going to film all that, I'm not going to bore you to tears with that. But I hope that's been really useful for you. Um, the only thing left to do, obviously, clutch-wise, is to uh, bleed the, the clutch. But um, you can either use a pressure bleeder or get someone pumping the pedal a few times, crack it off, close it off, rinse and repeat, keep filling it up, um, whichever way you prefer. But if you've pre-filled the slave like I've done, then it will be nice and easy to do so. So yeah, if you've stuck around to this point, thank you very much. Um, yeah, if you could subscribe, leave a comment if it's been useful for you. Let me know if there's anything that you do differently. Um, obviously up in the air would be a bit of a different process. Uh, but yeah, on the ground, I mean, a couple of people to, you know, maneuver a gearbox instead of having the transmission jack is possible. Uh, it's just a bit of a faff. So if it's you and your mate, you should be able to do it as well. Um, but yeah, any questions, fire them in the comments below and I'll see if I can help you out as well. Uh, but until next time, cheers guys.